This is episode 131 of the XY Podcast with Nick Lennox. So for this episode, we're going to step back in time just a little bit to our Brisbane XY on tour uh, two weeks ago. So Nick Lennox is the creative brain behind UDO Video and Media, and we actually asked Nick to help us capture the culture and vibe of the XY community at XY on tour. And he did an absolute stellar job of putting together a quick little uh, minute and a half video that really hits the brief in every regard. So we thought it would be really, really great to get him on a podcast to discuss all things video. So modern advisors, they don't use videos to sell their services. They use videos to highlight the feeling and emotion those services evoke. They use these videos to build trust and according to Nick, it is really working. So Nick works closely with advisors, helping them to generate high quality content, convey their message and showcase their unique point of difference. So Adrian has a really, really cool chat with Nick. Um, and in this episode, they sort of touch on uh, why being in front of a camera can actually help you understand your why, the power of client testimonial videos Uh, some of the most effective advisor videos that Nick's seen. And then Nick goes on to sort of delve into a few tips and tricks and things that he's kind of learned along the way. This is a great episode for anyone wanting to better understand the power of video and learn how you can leverage videos as part of your value prop or within your marketing strategy. Shout out again to Nick for your amazing efforts for the video you put together for us. We really appreciate it. And to everyone else, I hope you enjoy this episode. This podcast is brought to you by Salesforce, blaze new trails to richer client relationships with the world's number one CRM. Salesforce has designed the Financial Services Cloud to help you make every interaction personalized through rich client profiles centered on personal goals and pivotal life events. You can nurture deeper relationships with proactive tracking and event alerts that remind you to reach out when clients need you the most. Supercharge your productivity by managing client engagements, household relationships, and financial life goals all from the one connected platform. It's the world's number one CRM imagined just for wealth management. Salesforce is excited to partner with with XY Advisor to discuss how you can build richer client relationships and unlock loyalty. Nick, great to meet you in person. We've been nice. uh, we've been liaising. Emily's been chatting to you. Yeah, yeah. Excited to be here. Yeah, it's actually for those that uh, I guess this podcast is actually before our Brisbane event where mm. um, Nick's going to be all the amazing uh, imagery you're going to be let's, seeing. Let's uh, hope it's amazing. Oh, I think it's going to be good. <laughs> really, you can't you can't. Um, it's like Photoshop. You can do anything with. Uh, yeah catcher. yeah within reason i've actually um what is it like one week ago two weeks ago now i just like slipped a disc so i'm like really nervous about like running around yeah. with a camera but it should be right well yeah is it do you have any physio going on What's yeah that? yeah i've been going through a bit of treatment but yeah it's just you know yeah is there a good post, story around post-game. slipping the disc or? it's actually super embarrassing perfect can we <laughs> tell was, me more about it <laughs> it was uh playing frisbee Oh, like frisbee golf or something? Uh, ultimate frisbee? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, too unfit, didn't warm up, just went straight into it gung-ho, and uh, it started raining, and then I took a dive and just landed funny, and yeah, literally game over. Oh, wow. yeah. that's a really shit way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not even a cool story. <laughs> no. <laughs> Motocross, or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Emily was telling me there's some, some pretty good stories about how you ended up getting into videography. And- yeah, it's sort of... Um, I've, I've been thinking about it because she sent me through some example questions and it's it, it kind of just in some ways happened by itself, like happened naturally. I've actually only been doing this three years now, I okay. think. Um, and prior to that, I've been in mining and construction and doing like FIFO work. Yeah. Which, Did you work with Clive Palmer at all? Or? No. no. You <laughs> wanted to get not. paid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I started in, in Western Australia and then um, was here with Origin in um, Queensland. And it, it was all right. Like I learned a lot and managed to work my, work my way up to a, a decent position, but it was never really what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was FIFO and even time roster, I'd have... Um, two weeks off, you know, two weeks on, two weeks yeah. off. So in that two weeks, needed a, a hobby and, and just started taking photos. Yep. Um, and strictly just a hobby, but then people started asking me to, you know, do like family portraits and things like that. 
And then um, I guess I just got more and more obsessed with it and got into it more. And the sort of, for me, the natural progression from photos was then to move into videos because mm-hmm. it was a lot more challenging. I felt like I could tell more of a story, yep. um, things like that. And then I think it was, I can't remember what the year was, but it was made redundant. Yep. So I came to a bit of a crossroads in my yep. life. I, you know, Iron oil price went down yeah. or... That oil was, price, that was, yeah, and gas went down. Oil price, which affected <laughs> gas. And, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, a bit of a crossroads. So I, I was sort of, you know, con- continue earning good money but being miserable in mining mm. or, you know, take a giant leap of faith and try and completely change careers mm. and decided on the leap of faith. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I was, I was lucky enough to step out of my origin role straight into another role with a small um, coaching agency. And then from there, that was sort of my stepping stone um, and then decided to go out on my own. And yeah, cool. Like, still surviving, just. <laughs> yeah, and I think even from those early days, you'd, you'd worked with a lot of, uh, quite a number of advisors. Yeah, that's how I met um, Roxy from Announcer and yep. uh, a few people like I think that. Michael Back was it yep. as well? Yeah, still a good friend of mine. Uh, yeah, he's a champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was I guess a series of events just sort of made it happen in a way. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess through referrals. Yeah, you know, is that how, how the business goes? Yeah, a lot of it's been referrals. Um, I did do a little bit of advertising last year, but that was costing me too much and i found i was getting better results from referrals anyway Mm. um and now i think i've got enough of a network that's sustainable um and to grow anymore i'm gonna have to grow the business which is the next scary so you're you're open to taking on staff then yeah yeah yeah. we're um looking at doing an internship at the moment yeah yeah ideally with someone from university yeah Ideally, would love to bring somebody on. Yeah, yeah my experience yeah. is that it, it can work really well as long as you're someone that's willing to spend the time teaching. Yeah, I mean, I actually love teaching. Mm. If it's if if the person is, you know, uh, really good work ethics and and really passionate about what they're doing, I absolutely love uh, coaching and teaching. Mm. So um, I would probably get just as much out of it as they would. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, that's that's definitely right. Because I've seen seen where people have sort of they don't want to they want to try and do the more cost effective route, but yeah. really it's it's a trade off in how much time you want to spend. Yeah, um, yeah. And the and the flip side is that what, if you're shaping them a bit more, then you can sort of mould them. In the yeah. Way I, well, I, I think like what I've learnt, um, you know, still very new to business, but. It's it's very much about your client relationships. I'd mm-hmm. say fifty percent client relationships, fifty percent how good I am at what I actually mm. do. Um, Was well, so, that from a, the experience where you fucked something up and then you're like, oh shit, they love me so much that it's okay? <laughs> yeah, kind of, but but more just sort of. Um, I feel like these days videographers are a dime a dozen, <laughs> but um, somehow I've. I've managed to to grow and grow, and well, isn't everyone on their phone a video? Yeah, these exactly, days? Yeah. exactly. <laughs> but um, I think in any industry, if you if you build really strong relationships, that's that's going to skyrocket you even further than what you actually do as a job. Mm. So, with the intern thing, or you know, bringing somebody on, that would be a, a really big part of it. Is yep. sort of, I guess, yeah, teaching them that side of it. Which, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, like a bit of the sort of sales and marketing side of things. Yeah, I th- uh, sales and marketing, but but even just relationships. You know, like um, I like to think of all of my clients as good friends, and you know, build build relationships. Over well, a lot time. of the stuff that these videos, well, videographing does, is it gets mm. quite intimate. I guess it does. Mm. Yeah, there was it was weird. There was a period of time that I went through. I think last year that um, I did a few interviews, and they always ended in tears. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it was really uh, quite. It's amazing to be a part of, but yeah, quite uh, quite full on. Was that of that. clients of advisors, or was that just the? Um, there was a bit of both. There was actually some advisors that that sort of broke down as well. You know, um, I think when you when you start really breaking things down into why you do what you do, mm. um, you know, it's 
it can be quite confronting. And then there's something about being on camera that um, I guess makes you honest in mm. some way. You know, you're, you're held to this certain accountability. Um, so, yeah. It's a very vulnerable state, I guess. Yeah, that too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah it's interesting. Yeah, totally. Mm. I, I, I guess the, if you look at the trends over the last few years with video, video, videography and the advice, that, yep. that whole why do you do what you do has been a really big angle. Yeah, definitely. And yep. uh, I think, like, <clears throat> from what I've gathered, the, the journey, like, I don't know if I really ever had a proper crack at that, but um, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people that go through that, obviously, it's great. It's a good um, position for the business because it really shares a side of you and it makes you more relatable to prospective clients and clients that you're working with. But yeah, yeah. I think it's, it, from what I've seen, it's a really good uh, transformation for the actual people doing it because of what it forces you to actually... definitely. Because it has such clear, that sort of deeper thinking has such clear ramifications to what you're doing with your business. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've done it with someone who's sat there and like actually gone through that process and realized, oh shit, <laughs> yeah. why am I here? Yeah. This isn't what, has that, has that happened? Um, not to that extreme, yeah. but um, yeah, I, th- I think I think when people, when you, you sort of... You, it can be really tricky for people to separate, um, like, career from, I guess, their purpose in a way. And, um, like, the Simon Sinek way of thinking about the why is it shouldn't matter what drives you. Like, your job should have nothing to do with what drives you mm. kind of thing. And when people sort of come to that realisation, I mean, they're generally in the right profession and doing the right thing, but they kind of have a bit of an aha moment. And, you know, they're like, oh, wow. I never, it's just a different, like, a way of framing it, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think for a lot of people, it actually frees, I think, their minds a bit because of, like, the reason it is such an aha moment is because yeah. I guess they've been living in a bit of a more constrained view of yeah. what they are and what they're doing. And yeah, yeah. And it, it comes back to the whole thing, which I think is very relevant to advice, is, is sort of, you know, what defines success and, and things like that. And I think if you can sort of break away the stereotypical uh, thoughts of success um, and and bring it back to an emotional level, then, yeah, you, you feel a lot more energised for what you're doing, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, um, totally. And it, it, it probably helps you connect with clients better as well, I'd say, because you sort of – you're thinking about it from a different perspective rather than – strictly the service that you're offering mm. yeah well, with, yeah. yeah i guess on that with the clients um i suppose doing the client interview side of things that's mm. that's really interesting it's yeah i think that's extremely valuable um if if anybody's thinking about getting into video i think client testimonials is 100 percent the best way to go yeah because um i mean if you think about any any big brand um, that's you know doing ads at the moment. So take Apple for example. They never sell like they never sell the the product. They never sell the the, the st- uh, specifications of what that device might do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like oh, it's got sixteen gigs of RAM and yada yada yada. They always sell the feeling that mm-hmm. that product can offer. And I think that's that's true across a lot of successful advertising is you never sell the service or the product you sell the feeling that you get from it so i think for advisors what's really important is invoking that feeling of trust and the 100 percent the best way to do that is client testimonials because rather than you telling me how good you are somebody else coming in and saying i trust this guy with my life i'm gonna immediately go oh, okay i might actually pay attention and listen to what he has to say so yeah do the people that you've I guess the advisors you've done that with is there a bit of a um, impediment to them like a confidence thing to then to reach out is that something that they have to work through usually or do they have people they go oh I know exactly who I'm going to talk to yeah Um, mum my cousin (laughs) (laughs) I think sometimes there is a block but generally what I've seen is they sort of get it in their head that a client's going to feel awkward about it or, or they're going to feel awkward about it. But generally, a client is really excited to do it for you and 
you know, there's no harm in asking because if, if you're doing your job well, then it shouldn't be a problem. Mm, yeah. So it ties back to what you're saying about video <laughs> being such a, um, like an accountable lens. Yeah, even, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like what, I guess you can't, that, relative to a, like a, a testimonial on Google reviews or advisor rating sort of thing. It's, yeah. It's a bit hard to maintain um, a scripted sort of uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> through a video. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a um, a level of authenticity that's there that you can't. I don't think you can fake unless mm. unless you've got you know Hollywood budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Hollywood skills. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you say? Over, like you've, you've so you've done a range of different videos. What, yeah. you, what have you seen being the most effective for some for advisors over the last few years? Um, for advisors, definitely testimonials. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but I think on top of that, it probably trying to think outside the box a little bit, um, be a little different and um, make sure that you're showing personality. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is it? What do you mean by outside the box? Are we talking different settings or...? Um, I guess... I'm sort of starting to see it in real estate videos a little bit. Okay. It's sort of like, again, moving moving on from selling a product or service to selling a feeling. So real estate videos used to just be, you know, a flashy sort of walkthrough of the house. But now we see um, the guys that are doing it well, they're actually telling a story mm. and, like, giving you a feeling of the area and and giving the house a character almost yeah, yeah, yeah. which i mean for the one hand is engaging but you also you can then picture yourself living there yeah. and, and being part of that so i think if you can find ways to always tie you know say it's insurance tying that back to an emotion or a feeling mm. uh in a it doesn't have to be a sad way just an entertaining like engaging a story way. yeah yeah it's it's always going to be more effective because people are emotional. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's sort of. I thought, yeah, storytelling is one of the most effective forms of communication. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how people relate to things. Yeah, and, yeah. So, you know, you you don't have to create a viral video. It's it's just doing something that's authentic and and meaningful, um, and connecting with the right people. Mm. Like. I think people sort of think, oh, well, I only got this many views. It must be a terrible video. But if it's connecting with the right people, that's mm. all that matters. I mean, well, I think the, the yeah, the thing about the videos when you think when you, when advisors going through a process, going, oh, like it's a bit daunting to yeah. go do it. Like, yeah. These are if if the end outcome is to 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 have people get to know you a little bit before they then and, and help them on the journey yeah. to become a client. Yeah. Like, there's no right or wrong way to do it. No. Because you're you and that's what you're selling anyway. So, yeah. like, if you were doing it for a brand or, like, it was a different business, but because advice is so personal, like, you, you're you literally just, if anything, you're going to save yourself time because you're self-selecting. Yeah, exactly. Your prospects. Yeah. Yep. Like, if they don't resonate with what you're putting out there and it's you, then... 100%. Maybe it isn't a good fit, and you've just 100%. saved that hour yeah. first meeting that you might have done yeah. for free. Yeah. So. And I think the other thing that uh, with that is the exactly saving time. It seems like you know it is a big thing when you're first getting into video. It seems you know it can be terrifying. It might seem expensive, even though it doesn't have to be. But then, say you get, you know. You, you record a one good client welcome video or a client testimonial, that's going to be making a return for you for the life of your business. Mm. So in terms of return it's on heavy investment... heavy-green content, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. So in terms of return on investment, that's invaluable. Um, so, yeah, you're exactly right. You know, it does save you time and it does get to the right people when it needs to. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So... I guess the thing is, like, a lot of people be, like, everyone's got a phone these days. Yeah. yeah. Bloody quality of these cameras are ridiculous. Scary. You probably, if you go, <laughs> you probably look at the gear you used to use, like, a year ago, and you're like, the bloody, yeah. the latest phone is probably better than yeah, that. Like, yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I remember one of the first videos that I did for Announcer, um, actually, some of the footage was on my phone. 
and uh, luckily nobody noticed it. <laughs> but that's how good that's how good cameras are. And yes, it's no more really about necessarily the hardware so much. It's it's the guy that's driving it. It's the... Yeah, but I think it's it's just about. Um, it comes back to the message that you're putting out there and the story you're telling. Mm. Like, um, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel like you need to go and buy a two thousand dollar camera because you've got one in your pocket, um, and it doesn't matter if the the quality's no good for that type of. I mean, obviously, high production videos do have their place, but not every video has to be like that. Mm. And there's there's a lot of data that says that a mobile phone video can be very successful because it feels so authentic. Mm. Um, and, Anything and too I, polished could be a bit too like it. Yeah, I think you have to find that balance. Yeah, um, yeah so... To me, it's always it seemed to come down to audio, making sure the audio quality is... Absolutely. But, um, I mean, there's some great products out now for mobile phone microphones. Mm. Um, like Rode's probably... Rode microphone probably made the best one, but that's mm-hmm. pretty expensive. And then there's one, I mean, you can get them for 30 bucks. Mm. They plug straight into your phone. They'll sync straight away. Clip on your collar. Nobody will notice. Yeah, um, yeah takes production up by a tent. So, so we've, I guess we've talked about, um, I guess, reasons for you not to need to be around. Or um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I guess, I guess the key thing is, I think it's important for people to understand what the value is that having a partner like you on this journey, what sort of things you do? Because people, yeah. a lot of people, I think with these sort of services, people can be very simplistic in the way that they look at it. Yeah, sure. And not fully understand. And it's, it's all that in-between stuff from my understanding in terms yeah. of yeah. helping people on that journey that we've, to, we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think there is, there's a few sides to it. Um, and part of it is that emotional storytelling side. And then there's obviously a technical side. Um, and when I say technical, I mean then what, you know, if you've made a video, then what to do with that video. Um, and that's where people that I've partnered with or, you know, I can point you in the right direction. Um, you know, it's it's all well and good to create a great video and then stick it on Facebook and two weeks later somebody's forgotten about it. You know, it's mm-hmm. disappeared through the millions of videos that are uploaded every day. But if you can make a good video and then create a successful campaign or then use that mm. to increase SEO to your site, um, you know, really leverage the power of that video, mm. um, I think that's an important thing. And then the the emotional side of it, um, sometimes I, th- I could be wrong, but I would guess where I offer a lot of value on top of actually creating a video for you is is coming in objectively and helping you see it from a client's point of view Mm. um i've been to a lot of businesses where they have an idea of of the video they want to make and then i go yeah but that only makes sense to you and the people directly around you Mm. for me as a client like a potential customer or client that makes no sense like and and i can't relate to that and i Part of it, I don't even know what you're talking about. So we need to like strip that back and then approach it from this angle. So we're talking all the financial jargon, acronyms. That yeah, sort of yeah. Thing that just I mean, naturally just come off the yeah. top of the mind because you're in that world. Yeah. But, hmm. Well, it, it applies to any business. Just just having that objective view, um, you know, it's. I think that's pretty valuable mm. to to help you reposition in the way that you're thinking about the content you're putting out there totally yeah. my my experiences with um like around design or around messaging um especially for financial advice i think it's really important because um yeah the, the, having someone that actually doesn't understand financial advice as much like there's a like understanding it but like really not being as deep as yeah like just conceptually understanding it yeah yeah it's it's just such a great like it's such a great filter yeah absolutely and i've found it's really valuable because yeah. like okay so what I, what i need to do is make sure what i'm saying actually makes sense to this person yeah and yeah. that means i'm on the right track yeah yeah i think when you when you're in something every day it becomes so second nature to you that you you almost go oh well everybody knows this but nobody knows it at all mm. like and it could be really simple stuff that might take five minutes of googling but people still want that 
that reassurance and that feedback. Um, and I think you need that objective, you know, personal consultant to help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I'm inter- so if we were going to, so we've talked about a few things for like, if someone yep. wants to just go out and have a crack and yep. like, so we're talking, we're talking phone, road mic. Yep. As low as 30 bucks, you said. Yep. Just get in there, get in front of your camera. Maybe a, maybe a little tripod, like a yeah. little phone tripod. Yeah, I mean, those little gorilla pods are great. Yeah, to, you just know, pop it on the table. Yeah, they're like a few bucks on eBay. <laughs> any any hot tips when they're in front of the camera? <clears throat> because I guess some people look like stunned mullets when they're... Yeah, like, there's... Um, I, I wish there was a, a magic pill to make it better, but um, it really is just practice. Um like last year when I was doing advertising, I started doing my own videos, which is for a videographer, it's, you know, it's hard to, to switch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and really struggled. Like it was a good, good thing for me to go through because then I could completely relate to what other people were going through. But I just made the commitment to do that once a week, every week. Um, and probably after three, four weeks, didn't even notice the camera could completely be myself spoke naturally didn't get all jumbled up and nervous um so if, if you can just commit to it practice and then be consistent mm. it'll just become second nature like yeah. like anything yeah, yeah you just gotta yeah. jump i suppose yeah jumping in is probably the key first step yeah to yeah um i mean with with phones we live in a, an amazing age like you you could just make the commitment to make a vlog every day mm. on your phone and it's limitless what you can store on there because if you don't like it you delete it and nobody ever sees it mm. um, and that's a, a good way to sort of get you over that initial hurdle of feeling silly <laughs> yeah. yeah oh it's, it's yeah I've yeah. been through that journey it's, yeah, um, yeah yeah there's only one way to get through it and that's yeah. to start <laughs> yeah yeah so, so working with um, some of these advice businesses, what are the others? So you said client testimonials have been really valuable to these businesses. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, how do they use these testimonials? What are some of the ways they repurpose it and get it out there in front of their audiences? Um, I, th- I think a, a good place to start is simply just on your website mm-hmm. um, because that, obviously, if you can drive people to your site, it has two purposes. Once they're there... Um, you're building that trust and those touch points straight away. But also we all know that Google and Facebook and LinkedIn prioritize video. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to help you rank a lot higher in terms of SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even just simple campaigns on Facebook, you know, um, you can either go full-blown marketing campaign and build a funnel and use these testimonials as part of the, the touch points for the funnel or just put it out there and see what happens organically you know there's marketing's not my expertise yep. but um i think some guys that are doing it really well at the moment is wealth seekers okay yeah here in brisbane yep um and and sort of just using those those touch points to to sort of build trust and and help bring people to the business and then and then have a very nice warm inviting place to be once you're on at the website mm-hmm. mm. Okay. Well, there's a there's another area that I've I've sort of I, I've thought about for a long time mm. and I haven't really got into as much as I'd like to. Yep. Is video as a means to accelerate? <clears throat> um, I guess the initial journey of a client through um, interacting those first few steps with the advisor because the advice process is is huge. Really, yeah. it's a lot to take on for a client. Yep. There's a lot to process, and most clients come out the end of that first period and getting their first SOA and they're still just like they're still feeling like they're drinking from a fire hydrant yeah, yeah, yeah. so one of the, one of the concepts one, in, in this day and age the, the time for the advisor is very um, valuable yeah, yeah super valuable yeah. like the amount of compliance they, they've got to get their time and their efficiency down of dealing with clients as, yep. as low as possible. Yep. So I, I can see video as a really good means to, to help with those touch points and education points so yep. when people get to meetings they're you're able to really gravitate towards the higher value space where the advisor is going to add more value. Yeah. And the initial um, uh, educational points that the advisor would have to go through in that meeting if they, the client wasn't across. Yeah, yeah. 
have you seen this have you seen this done or i've i've seen it done a bit um i think it was announcer were doing it really well yep. with an app called bonjoro yep um which is is pretty awesome tool because you can basically embed a, a video straight into an email yep like any email so for things like follow-up emails or you know thank yous and stuff like that it's great um for longer form content I think what you're saying is completely accurate and it, it also serves another purpose um, in the front end, like onboarding a client. Um, but yeah, this comes back. I think what you're saying is great from a technical standpoint, but it also comes back to building trust and credibility for yourself. So if you can build that knowledge base in video mm. that can then be used to... Uh, take a client on this journey but also educate them um that's going to be invaluable for the company again great return on investment for yeah. for these videos but the other side of that at, in the early days is um i'm sure you've heard of the mere exposure effect yes uh, yeah. yep it's the um basically a phenomenon where you if you see something regularly you become familiar with it Mm -hmm. and feel like you if it's a person feel like you know them so if you can create that those steps before even before your first meeting somebody's gonna immediately when they get to your meeting they're gonna feel like they know you Mm -hmm. and and be that's going to take a lot of stress off them Mm -hmm. um I, i actually had an experience like that where um uh, I follow a lot of people on YouTube mm-hmm. and there was a big YouTuber that I, I met over in America and it was the same thing because I'd been watching him for a few years on YouTube when I saw him in person I was like how oh, yeah. and I was like wait he doesn't know me <laughs> he's got no idea about you <laughs> I know him but he doesn't know me yeah, yeah so it's, it's a little bit like that for me on the podcast yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll be at an event like tonight and I'll yeah, and I feel I feel a bit bad. Emily, poor Emily's there. She's she's sort of um, well known in the group. And, yeah, right. And you sort of, um, yeah. Sorry, I don't really. Know. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick, who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's how powerful it is. Yeah, you know, people people feel like they know you, and that's that's building that trust. Yeah, there's yeah. that. I suppose the difference is between like you. There's all these videos out there. Like if you think about the, um, the product providers will put out videos yeah. around what's insurance and what. Yeah. And and there's people doing it, yeah. but it's not you. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the point that you're making in terms of like that touch point and the rapport that that can build, yeah. you're not getting that if you, you might be ticking the education box, you might be helping, you're definitely ticking that efficiency standpoint yeah. if they're paying attention to the video. For sure. But doing it without you is sort of, um, you, you're giving away, a, a, you're missing a chance to, yeah. to build that rapport and actually build a stronger bond with these clients. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can always find the balance with it. Obviously, like you said, people are, are, are time poor. Um, you, you don't have to be, you know, involved in that the whole way along. Um, but but I think at some point, if you're going to be their advisor, you need to build those touch points. But in terms of the efficiency side of things, you know, obviously you want to do that efficiently and that doesn't necessarily have to be you. Mm. Um, but, it's, yeah, it's just finding the balance, I think. Well, I think the video... That I think when people get a bit tied up when they think about... Um, when you, you try to bring that whole marketing funnel process yeah. into the client onboarding process yeah, and, like, the automation flow of it and that sort of thing, like, yeah. I guess... I guess I can see I can see this sort of a setup where an advisor could have maybe six different videos that cover different areas. Yep. But they don't automatically go out to the client. It's what you you're sort of you might have had a phone call before leading into the um, that first big bigger meeting. Yeah. And you've established that there's a couple of things. Oh, okay. Well, you want to know a bit more about that. Yep. Boom. Yep. Exactly. Video B goes out. Exactly. So you really so you got that efficiency if it's already prepared. Yep. But you're tailoring it to the yeah, yeah, definitely client. Yeah, um, again, great return on investment. <laughs> yeah, video all the way, guys. Yeah, yeah. So what? What? Um, I guess you've been so some of the stuff you did with the so I remember seeing one of those videos, and yeah. there was like because they're very active. They've got all their sport and like such yeah. a sport. Like it's they're amazing like, what they've done. They got the yeah. I think um, 
healthiest employer awards oh, yeah, like or something. AFA, you know? yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they and that's they were all wearing Fitbits yeah, and things yeah. like that, and and that was I, I'm guessing with that one that was getting that message out about the business around how how they value health and yep. that. Yeah, um, I th- I th- was that the soccer video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that was just when they'd won that award and, and that soccer team was also, I think that was sponsoring Red Cross as well. Okay. So we sort of wanted to promote the, the healthy workplace um, and then the sponsorship as well. So that went on to be a sponsorship video. Um, that's That's another great place that video can be efficient is the onboarding or you know b2b side of things Mm -hmm. so with partners with partners or even bringing on um you know new employees or attracting Mm. people to your business um sort of some people might not see the the value of say this was you know an event run by a company they might not see the value of, of covering that with video they're like oh it's our event we're not going to show this to clients. Why would we do it? But if you can build a, a, a great um, culture piece from that, mm. like we do with announcer, then that becomes part of your onboarding process mm. and it starts to look like a, a great place to work and, you know, you want to be part of that. So, um, yeah, well, yeah, like obviously, like tonight, you're going to do a bit of um, video of the events. Yeah. And, yeah. and I guess the way we see it is like a lot of people um, – X, Y, Visor does a number of different things. And mm. it's sort of sometimes until they really get into it, it's it's hard for them to grasp actually what this community means or what yeah. it, what it, what's going on. Yeah. So I think that a video, like we're keen to get a video together that um, can really convey that and co- yeah. convey yeah. that community feel. And we're talking before about like um, talking to a couple of the advisors and yeah. seeing how they're going and just sort of get the vibe. Get the- yeah, I think it's, I mean, it, it if say say you had a journalist here and they wrote about this event, you wouldn't get the same. I'm not discrediting writing because I enjoy reading, mm. but um, you wouldn't get the same vibe and that same sense of that looks fun. I want to be there, sort of thing that you can get from something very visual. Yeah, the depth. Um, is... Yeah, and and obviously with the interviews and stuff, you can start connecting with people. And yeah, I think it's a powerful tool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited mm. for tonight. Mm. The the other thing I've been thinking of while mm. we're talking is um, virtual reality and like three D and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yep. Any any musings on that? I've I've dabbled. Yeah, <laughs> I've dabbled with three D. Um, uh, it was a pretty funny story actually. I was working with um, you know Emily Seabom, the swimmer. Yeah. Um, and Tess Alexander, who was uh, I think she was Miss World Australia. Cool. So we were doing a piece for um, Mercedes and Personalised Plates Queensland. And the only way that I could film them both in this car was with a, uh, a 360 camera. So I had that sort of rigged up on, in the windscreen of this, I don't know, half million dollar Mercedes. <laughs> and I had to lie down in the back seat and cover myself with a black blanket so I like faded into the I just looked like part of the seat and then control it from my phone control this interview so for that kind of scenario 3D is fantastic because then I could just point the camera wherever I needed to Um, in terms of virtual reality or 3D for advisors I don't know three dimensional advisor (laughs) (laughs) Um, you get the client in a room and you sort of take them to the way I, I actually can see things going is like in the goals discovery process you actually put VR goggles on, yeah, on yeah. the client and in the state where you're so you're talking to them yeah. but there might be like I love the idea of having some sort of interface where you can sort of take them explore and just yeah. start to yep. go open doors and just go and see what things could be like <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe this is getting a bit too far but no like, no I think I mean augmented reality is is growing like you know phenomenally at the moment um so I think yeah if you can come up with an idea and try and get in early it's the right I've got move. the idea. It's just, I think the, the challenge is always executing on it. Yeah, I'm not sure if the technology is quite there yet. It's, it, yeah. it's getting really good, but I, I guess if you start exploring it now, it's probably you're going to be in the ground floor. Lay the foundations. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> what about and, and drones as well? What about what about drones? Um, yeah, I did drone stuff for a while. 
Um, the laws in Australia are getting pretty strict. Um, I don't think I don't think you can fly in Brisbane anywhere now oh, without a license. Okay. I mean, no matter what, you have to be registered with CASA. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I didn't read. Is it on the size of the drone? Or? Yeah, under under two kilos, I think you're okay. Okay, so, so like, something you'd be using for a proper video, like yeah, those big ones that they have at the Olympics. The bigger ones are yeah, they're they're yeah, that's like five thousand dollars to get that license for one of them, and then the insurance is just ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah. Like to fly anywhere in the city, they have to have like a, um, I think it's a two step fail safe system. So they have to have like inbuilt parachutes and and things like that. Wow! So that's a, a whole different game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you we're stick, actually you're going to stick on the ground for the moment. Is that well? That? <laughs> well, I've been, I've been thinking about it recently, and we're doing a um, like a mini documentary series for Fortitude Valley. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, because before the stricter laws came in, I had a drone and I'd, I've got some shots of the story bridge and stuff like that. I was like, I could use them, but everyone just knows it's a drone and, you know, I want it to look, you know, really epic and amazing. It's actually cheaper just to hire a helicopter. And because of all the regulations yeah, around it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's going to look better anyway. So I thought, oh, yeah, why don't we just hire a helicopter and go get the shots we need? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So the yeah. nanny state is um, put drones to... Uh, yeah, I, it's not. I mean, you can still fly in a lot of rural areas. Um, okay. There's still a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure. You know, maybe you could try doing a, a client testimonial from a, a drone or something. Be <laughs> pretty engaging. Take a take a client skydiving <laughs> yeah, and interview them up, yeah, the, up yeah. there. Hey, yeah. you said to think outside the box. Well, I, I like it. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get up to as an advisor. I know. Um, in in New South Wales, and he he's got he has all these things like he's got mm. a um he's got like a paraglider with a fan jet thing and oh yeah like a, a death machine a par- <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got a he's got his go he's got his GoPro with a um I think he, I saw him with a um a hydrofoil like yeah wow you know the on the like like water skiing yeah yeah, of, yeah 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 crazy. So. I guess that, he, he could start vlogging from his... He could his get the GoPro going. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> hey, I reckon, yeah, all this stuff, if it's you, it's you. Yeah, that's it. That's There's it. no wrong way to do it. And again, that comes back to thinking differently and, you know, make it look different, make it look a bit more authentic or exciting. You know, if you can think of something like that, if you're brave enough to strap a propeller to your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I'm, I'm taking that as Nick's, Nick's paying message. Um <laughs> Go have a crack to be exactly. different. Just, yep. Yep. If you come up against a wall, give them a call. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. so it, it, it doesn't have to be hard, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, is there anything that you'd, you'd want to share about anything you're doing coming up? Um, obviously, uh, so there's U- U- Udio. Udio, yep. yep. Udio Media, yep. which is U-D-E-O. Yep. Um, and where can they find you for that? Uh, just udio.com.au. Yep. Yeah, it's probably the easiest. Um terrible site but you'll still get a hold of me <laughs> i am a videographer i'm not a website <laughs> yeah. i don't have time for it <laughs> <laughs> too many clients yeah. and was there anything else that you like to um, share with you? what have i got coming up i think the most exciting thing that i i really look forward to sharing with everyone is the the documentary that we're working on mm. um yeah hopefully this is the Fortitude Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be a, at this stage. It's going to be in the bars and everything, or what's it? Yeah, partly we're trying to we're trying to spread it across different businesses. Yep. Um, but it's sort of showcasing Fortitude as a. It's sort of become the tech and creative hub of Brisbane. Yeah. Um, okay. And it's growing really quickly. Um, there's some great developers that are doing some some awesome things there, restoring their old buildings and things like that. Mm. So, just trying to build that whole vibe. And I can see a great video inside. What's the club uh, cloud? Like cloud with all lands. the colors. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a psychedelic. So yeah. There's so many colors going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. There are some cool bars, and there's some there's some really cool old you know music institutions and stuff as well. Well, last last yeah. time we had the event up here, we went we we all went out after and um, ended up at a couple of live music venues around yeah, around yeah. here, and that was and that was phenomenal. Yeah. Hopefully can find them again tonight so <laughs> yeah. i'm sure you'll be able to show us yeah yeah time. definitely um actually the uh the guy from powderfinger i can't i think it's the drummer from mm-hmm. powderfinger 
he's he was part of the Tivoli, which is a big music venue here, and he's now opening like a matinee theatre um, on Brunswick Street, which. Okay. Um, apparently we're allowed to go have a peek inside, but it's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, that'll be part of it as well. Yeah, really awesome. Exciting. That sounds yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, Nick, thanks very much for coming on. I hope I added some value. Yeah, well, if, yeah, if yeah. anyone's got further questions, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nick sounds like he's yeah. happy to answer them. Yeah. Reach out. Um, yeah, throw them out to him. And then, um, and if not, just go have a crack yourself. Yeah, I, I think it's... You know, you can always delete them, but have a go, I yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if no one else likes it, your mum's still going to like it, so <laughs> yeah. just send it. Sure. Someone's going to like it. Someone's going to like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Nick. Thanks Thank for Thank you very on. much for having me on. Look forward to tonight. Yeah.